Good morning, lovely people. I'm quite excited today because it seems to be a, a lovely day. We got some very nice sunshine. And as you know, if you're looking at this video from the US or from Europe, just be aware that I am in, in Australia. And right now it's still winter. When we have some really nice days like today, it seems like it's gonna be warm. Uh, it's a bit of summer in winter, so it makes me very happy, very excited. So let's uh, feed the trout. Wow. So you know the water is just back to 11 degrees Celsius. And uh, it was at 8 degrees Celsius a few days ago. So the trout are now way more active. A few degrees more in the water makes a huge difference into their appetite. As you know, Trout, such as most of the other fish, almost all other fish, well, they are cold blood animals, which means that their metabolism, temperature, is, uh, is linked to the temperature of the water. And the activity of their metabolism, the activity of their body, the digestion and everything in their body is linked to the body temperature. So basically the colder it is and the less active they are. And the warmer it is and the more they will eat and they will move. So trout are a cold water fish so even at 8 or 11 degrees they are still active and they still eat a bit. But the warmer the temperature will be and the more they will be they will be active and they will eat. So uh, the most uh, Active time is 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. That's where that's where they really eat a lot, consume a lot, and grow a lot. So today I would like to um, to take the opportunity of this sunshine to talk about the, the aquaponic system uh, position, how to position your aquaponic system. And here it's not a, it's not a course, right? It's just a, a little video that I do for for pleasure and to inspire you. So. We are not going to go in full depth because this is something I treat and I talk about in, uh, in my trainings, especially in the training uh, holistic aquaponics. But quickly, how do we position the aquaponic system? If you look at it now, it's all in the shed and you will think the sun is not here yet, but look at the roof of the house. You see, you have all the, the, the sun that is here already. But here, we don't have any exposition yet. So, you know, there is, when you position an aquaponics, there is what needs to be done. I mean, what, basically there is the, the rule and the, there is what you can do. So you have to adapt. You know what, what is the best, then you need to adapt it to wherever you live and what is the best you can do with what you have. So ideally, what I recommend generally is to have the fish tank in the shed. So you can have a bit of sun on it, but it's better if uh, it's not exposed to full sun. And of course, you know that the sun is moving during the day. So you may have part of uh, the day that, is, uh, that you have the pond exposed to the sun. Uh, so the best, even for the fish uh, spawning and uh, for the fish health, is to have a little bit of sun uh, on early morning and late, uh, late during the night, afternoon. So that's uh, the best for the fish pond. But if you have too much, too much sun going directly into the pond during the day, as you can imagine, you will have um, some challenges with the algae. Because algae develop very well when you have light. If you have direct light going into the water, you have some chances of having a green water and having benthic algae, which means that there are algae that grow on the bottom of the tank. And, uh, I have developed this subject several times, but algae are not, are not a huge problem in aquaponics. It's just that they don't look that good, right? <laughs> and also they make the, the oxygen fluctuate. You know, there is uh, oxygen into the water. That's what the fish are breathing. Well, if you have a lot of algae, algae are like plants. During the day, they produce some oxygen. They do some photosynthesis, you know, and they transform the energy of the sun 
into uh, into energy that they can stock glucosis and uh, or, or sorry glucids and uh, they also release some oxygen into the water they breathe some co2 um, carbon dioxide and they release some oxygen into the water but in the same time as they are doing the photosynthesis they, they breathe as well they still breathe so they still consume a bit of oxygen the problem is during the night during the night there is no light anymore so the all the algae are stop stopping producing oxygen and now they, con they still breathe so they still consume oxygen so you have a lot of fluctuation when you have a lot of algae in the pond. During the day, you have a lot of oxygen. So when you look at the fish, they look amazing. But during the night, all the living creatures are consuming the oxygen. It slightly decreases. When you wake up in the morning, that's the point where you have the less oxygen available in the pond. So that's all, always the time. If you check your oxygen, if you check the fish behavior, always check it the very early morning, before the sun rises, or just when the sun rises. That's where you will, you will see if the fish have enough oxygen or not. And so if you have a lot of algae, you will have a lot of fluctuation. Anyway, I'm not going to do a, a full module here <laughs> on uh, how to position your aquaponics system. If you really want this, uh, it's available on the training uh, Holistic Aquaponics. But right now, what I want to give you is some indication. So what you want is to have the fish pond a bit more in the shed and the grow beds, so where you grow your plants. You know, here I got two grow beds, so I got one that is there at the back, as you can see, and another one that is there, as you can see. So those two grow beds, ideally, when you can, you want them to be more exposed to the sunlight, because, as you know, plants need uh, some sunlight to grow. That's exactly the same as the algae. So we basically don't want to give too much light to the algae and we want to give the light to the vegetables. So the, the rule, when you can, is to have the grow beds exposed to the sunlight and the fish tank or the pond uh, not exposed to the direct sunlight. Then there are other things you need to take in consideration and I'm not going to develop here. But there are some things that are quite important you want, if you want to be able to enjoy your aquaponic system properly. At least if you follow the two recommendations I just gave you, you're going to have an aquaponic system that is going to be very efficient. That's probably the most important. So you see the plants there, they are developing some uh, really nice leaves and I enjoy it because those leaves are starting to cover the pond and the fish can hide below the leaves. So it's a very er good area for them to hide if there is any predator or even, you know, to not be stressed. They need to have uh, some type of space where they can be hidden, even from you. And those plants, they are also developing some roots. So the roots, they are, of course, in the media where, they, where the, the plants is growing, where the plants are growing, but also the roots are coming in the pond. So it will create some area where you get roots, such as what we have below this float that we can see here. I will try to show you the roots here. Just below uh, there, you will see a bit of roots. Well, we unfortunately can see a pipe as well. I should hide this pipe, it doesn't look good. That's uh, the, the air pipe for, from the air pump, you know, that allow us to have some aeration. But the roots here are very, very beneficial for the fish. Depending on the species of fish you have, they may absolutely need this type of support to, to, to breed. For instance, here I got some goldfish, and uh, thanks to those, uh, they, can, they, can, they can breed, they can uh, spawn. They will spawn on the roots and uh, yeah, it's, a, it's really a natural environment for them. We, the aim for me is really to, to be as close as possible to nature, to, to a classic biotope. That's how you recreate a nice ecosystem. So it's really a nice day. As you can see, the watercress as well is growing pretty well. It started to spread around. And uh, a few days ago, it was a bit yellowish, 
I added some minerals and now you see it's becoming green again. I will show it to you again. You see here, the leaves, the new leaves, they are very uh, nice dark green. If you look at the older, green, older leaves, they were a bit more um, yellowish. You see this one, for instance? And look at this, here we can really see it. Let me pick this, I will show you. You see, I had some deficiencies and we can see here it's a very light yellow. And the new ones, since I added the minerals and I rectified the deficiency I had in the system, the new ones are becoming very, very green and you can see it's a strong green. You need to be able to read your vegetables, your plants. When you see this type of color, you know that you have a problem in your system, you have a, a deficiency. It's leaking of some element. And then you rectify it and you see the new growth is becoming nice and uh, strong. Some area had more deficiencies than others. If you look on this side here, you don't really see the deficiency. You can guess that some plants were a bit yellowish, but most of them were really nice green. But on the cascade, it was more the case. So that's something I like because the plants give us some feedback. You know, we can really read what is happening in the system, what the plants in, in what shape the plants are. You know, some people, they see a plant, a plant is a plant for them. They don't really see the variation, the, the plant don't give them any information, but with time, learn how to read the plants. You, know, you learn how to, to talk to them. Basically, they talk to us, they tell, they tell us something is wrong or if everything is going well. When you see this type of nice dark green and you see the flowers on the top, the, the white flowers, that's a plant that is in really good condition. There is no problem. Then when you look at those ones here, you see some uh, old leaves. So someone would be able to say, oh, this plant is completely sick. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not healthy. There is a problem in the system. But this is, a, <laughs> this is a different thing. You need to be able to read and to interpret. This is just because it's, it's winter. So of course you got the, the leaves that are dying. New ones will come. But that's just because that's the season, that's due to the season. It's different to the watercress. This watercress here uh, really had a deficiency. So you need to know your plants, you need to know what, uh, what is the biology of the plant basically. When is it supposed to, to grow? When is it supposed to die a bit because it's too cold? And um, when there is a problem and you, you can act and do something. And, and honestly, it's a bit like gardening. But uh, the only difference is that here we got more parameters, more variation. You know, in a garden, very often you work with the soil and then you can improve the soil. But you, go, you always got a base. With the soil, you always got a base of nutrients and base of minerals. But in aquaponics, we are not linked to the soil. So everything relies on the ecosystem we create. So we can have, if you don't manage the system properly, you can have very quickly some deficiencies. If you respect few balances, if you respect what I what I teach in uh, my trainings, you you will be fine, and you will be able to to grow some nice uh, some nice food, some nice plants in a in a healthy environment, and the plants will be very healthy. So I hope uh, that inspires you, and uh, it gives you a bit more information on the first on the the, the aquaponics uh, position where you should uh, position your aquaponic system, where you can position your aquaponic system, and where you shouldn't position your aquaponic system. And then, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little talk about uh, plant health. I think it's, uh, it can be useful to talk a bit more about, about this, this type of things that are happening in aquaponics, because I see some of you, you, you have an aquaponic system, at the beginning it works, and after a few months, um, you don't manage it properly and uh, you start to have some deficiencies so the leaves can start to turn yellow. Well, you see, you just need to read the signs and see what is happening and balance the system. So I will talk a bit more about this in the future probably, but uh, if you need more information about aquaponics, 
about anything we have talked today, but even any topic about backyard aquaponics and especially flood and drain aquaponics, I highly recommend you to join the Aquaponics Revolution community. Uh, it's a community of like-minded people who, who want to see a change uh, in the way they are consuming food and they want to produce their own food. And uh, in the community, I really help you to produce food in your backyard with aquaponics. I give you uh, the last tips that I have, what I am doing here. I try to inspire you and of course we can communicate. Uh, there are 10,000 people, a bit more than that, in the community. So if you want to be one of, one of us, you are really welcome to join the movement. There is a link into the description and um, I look forward to talking to you there. And I see you in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.